Ranking every Premier League captain based on playing ability. I've seen this comment so many times. He's got to pick it at some point. Maybe someone should tweet him about it or something? I tried it a couple of months ago, got a load of likes. Then someone else tried it last week, he got a load of likes. Might as well try again. Three times a charm, hopefully. Ranking every Premier League club's captain based on playing ability. Ranking every Premier League club's captain based on playing ability. Or on how good of a captain they are. That's boring and highly subjective. Sticking to my guns, this comment got 1.8 thousand likes a couple of days ago. Ranking every Premier League club's captain based on playing ability. Okay, okay, Arib. Having woken up with a bloody decapitated horse's head lying next to me in bed this morning, I figured that Arib was getting pretty serious about this video idea, and that I'd best bite the bullet and give it a go. In fairness, as he quite rightly points out, it did end up getting over 2,000 likes on one video, and when a suggestion gets 2,000 likes, within reason, I'm pretty likely to give it a go. Oh, and apologies if that sounded a bit creepy, it's my first time playing around with voice distorters, but after that roaring success, I'm now keen to make them a regular part of the channel. As Ari points out, this is a suggestion I've been getting for ages, and after playing it this week, I realised I'd actually planned it out once before in November, and the positions of a few players had changed in my second draft, which just goes to show what a typically fickle football fan I really am. Right. Here are the 20 Premier League captains ranked in terms of playing ability, according to me, only me, and no, you're not expected to agree. 20th, Grant Hanley. The People's Channel doesn't just take on your video suggestions, but also your views on how to order the videos. By virtue of that fact, this video is ranked from worst to best, starting with the absolute car horse that is Grant Hanley. That's a bit harsh, and I'm not sure that slagging off players really suits me, but I have said on a couple of occasions on this channel that when I tuned in for the first game of the season between Norwich and Liverpool and saw Grant Hanley and Daniel Farkas starting 11, that I feared for the Canaries. Hanley became Norwich's club captain following Russell Martin's departure in 2018, but he made only 9 league appearances the following season, as the club won promotion. He has made 15 league appearances this season, of which Norwich have won only three, and I'm sorry to say, he's my choice as the least talented captain in the Premier League right now. 19th, Simon Francis. Having begun his career at Bradford City in the 2002-03 season, it's fair to say that Simon Francis has been around the block of it. The 35-year-old struck gold in 2011 when he signed for Bournemouth, and in 2015, he got his first taste of Premier League football on the South Coast. Francis has been a tremendous servant to AFC Bournemouth, but his powers have inevitably begun to wane over the last couple of seasons. Formerly an ever-present and even Bournemouth's Players Player of the Year once, Francis became the Cherries' permanent captain in 2016, and he led the team with distinction for the next two seasons. Equally comfortable at right-back or at centre-back, Francis suffered a crucial ligament injury in December 2018, and ever since, I don't think I could justify ranking him much higher than 19th. 18th. Billy Sharp. It seems a bit harsh calling some of these players, all of whom are captaining Premier League clubs lest we forget, the worst, really, I would prefer to say they are simply the least good among an excellent calibre of player. Billy Sharp is a very good centre forward at Championship, and historically at least, particularly at League One level, but even in a cameo role, this is already his best ever season in the Premier League. Sheffield-born and a boyhood Blades fan, Sharp has scored three goals in 18 games at Chris Wilder's side this season, often coming on late when the team is in need of a goal. A brilliant servant to the club and a legend of the EFL, Sharp's 18th place, ranking seems harsh, but I think it's an honest assessment of his talents at the age of 34. 17th, Wes Morgan. It's noticeable, especially in the early parts of this video, how many Premier League captains are past their prime and suffer in terms of their placement here as a result. Managers often look for experience in captains, so perhaps that should come as little surprise, and Wes Morgan is 36 years of age now. Morgan has been Leicester City's captain since the summer of 2012, just six months after joining the Foxes. He has since captained the club to promotion to the Premier League, a Premier League title, and even into the knockout stages of the Champions League. Given that extraordinary journey, 17th place seems borderline disrespectful, but Morgan is very much on the fringes of the first team now, only having made 8 appearances this season. In the league. 16th, Mark Noble. Mark Noble has managed to maintain a fine equilibrium of being good enough to play for West Ham, but not so good that anyone better than West Ham wanted to sign him for almost 15 years. That in of itself is a pretty impressive achievement, and the result has been almost 500 appearances for the Londoners. 
I appreciate the attributes that Noble brings to the table, and I think he sometimes gets some unfair criticism, but I can't rank him any higher than 16. The young capped Englishman has capped in the Hammers since Kevin Nolan left the club in 2015 and now aged 33. One would be amazed if Noble didn't retire at the London Stadium. 15. Jamal Lascelles There are a lot of mid to lower end Premier League teams who are captained by very capable centre backs, and Jamal Lascelles is one such example. Subscribers to this channel will know that I've long considered Lascelles to be a really adept centre back, and it says more about the quality of the other captains that he's only 15th than it says about him. Signed by Newcastle from Nottingham Forest in 2014, he was chosen by Rafa Benitez as Newcastle's new captain following Fabrizio Colaccini's departure in 2016. 14. Seamus Coleman Seamus Coleman is bitterly unfortunate to only take 14th place given his incredible service to Everton over the years. Signed by Everton for just £60,000 in 2009, which is now less than the average Premier League player's weekly wage, Coleman is one of the biggest bargains of the Premier League era. Unfortunately for Coleman, he suffered a true horror injury in March 2017, from which he has recovered, but perhaps hasn't yet returned to his rampaging best. The 31-year-old has played only two Premier League games for Everton this season, with on-loan French international Gibral Sidibe having been the Toffees' regular starter at right-back. 13th, Pierre-Emil Hoiberg. The most recently appointed captain in the Premier League, it was only in March 2020, shortly before the Premier League season was suspended, that Southampton manager Ralph Hasenhutl decided to strip Saints favourite James Ward-Prowse of the club's captaincy and hand it to Pierre-Emil Hoiberg. Both Hoiberg and Hasan Hutzel arrived at Southampton from the Bundesliga, with Hoiberg joining the Saints from Bayern Munich in 2016. An industrious and intelligent central midfielder, Hoiberg has tended to get more involved further up the pitch since Hasan Hutzel took over at St. Mary's, often to good effect, and he takes 13th place for me. 12. Ben Mee Ben Mee may not be the most naturally gifted captain in the Premier League, but he is undoubtedly among the most consistent. The former Manchester City trainee has become a real hero at Turf Moor, having joined Burnley on loan in 2011, and then on a permanent deal in 2012. I have often said I think me is unfortunate not to have won an England cap, given that teammates James Tarkovsky and former teammate Michael Keane both have, and the 30-year-old thoroughly deserves his spot in 12th. Me inherited the armband from departed goalkeeper Tom Heaton last summer, but he has long been a leader within the Clarets ranks. 11th, Troy Deeney. A man in the news right now given his concerns regarding the Premier League's project restart, Watford will be a far weaker team should Premier League football return and they be without the service of their talismanic captain. Deeney has had a tumultuous 10 years at Vicarage Road, scoring 129 goals in 388 games and becoming a Hornets legend. Far from the daintiest of centre forwards, Deeney is bullish, as strong as an ox and willing to put his head in where it hurts in order to grab a goal. He is Watford's top scorer in the league once again this season, with six goals from 17 appearances to date. 10th, Luka Milivojevic. Slap bang in the middle of this list, Luka Milivojevic, and I will say this with some certainty, is the best captain in the Premier League when it comes to taking penalties. I can recall the Serbian international being one of Marco Silva's primary targets as manager of Hull City in January 2017, but Milivojevic ended up signing for Palace and subsequently scored as the Eagles beat us 4-0 in the game that ensured their survival and our relegation. On those grounds, he's lucky I haven't put him last, but I like to think my biases don't get in the way of my decision making. Milivojevic is a talented and hard-working midfield sitter who likes to win possession, keep things simple and score the occasional cracker. Nine. Connor Cody. Up until only a few years ago, a Nuno Espirito Santo's arrival at Wolves, Connor Cody played in central midfield. The former Liverpool man has gone from a pretty run of the mill championship midfielder to a very capable Premier League centre back under the watchful eye of Wolves' Portuguese head coach, and he is now possibly the first name on the team sheet most weeks at Molyneux. Cody is neither the biggest nor the strongest, and I'm not sure how he'd cope in a back four but in the middle of a three-man centre-back triad, he is excellent and good value for a spot in ninth. Eighth, Lewis Dunk. Brighton have a very good selection of centre-backs for a relegation threat inside, based in the likes of Lewis Dunk, Shane Duffy and Adam Webster right now, along with Ben White, who is due to return in the summer following an excellent season on loan at Leeds United. Lewis Dunk is the Seagulls' most established centre-back and a man who would bleed blue and white were you to cut him in half, which I obviously wouldn't advise. Dunk has been with Brighton since he was a child, but the England international only became club captain following club legend Bruno's retirement last summer. 7th, 
Harry Maguire. From one England international centre-back to another, Harry Maguire is a year younger than Lewis Dunk, but he has already won 25 more caps for the three lines than the Brighton man. Gareth Southgate actually tried to call Maguire up during his time at Hull City, but injury prevented him from making his England debut until he signed for Leicester. Maguire became a bit of a cult hero at the 2018 World Cup, and in 2019, he became the most expensive defender in world football. £80 million is an extraordinary amount of money, but Manchester United have put plenty of responsibility on Maguire's shoulders. Following Ashley Young's move to Inter Milan in January, Maguire became the Red Devils club captain, and he kickstarts our top seven. Sixth, Jack Grealish. Jack Grealish is yet to make his England debut and plays for a team that has every chance of getting relegated this season, but I still think he's a more talented footballer than all those who precede him in this video. Birmingham-born Grealish was appointed as Villa's new captain following Dean Smith's arrival at the club, and his form has been superb ever since. The Englishman has been among the most creative players in the Premier League this season, unsurprisingly, adding fuel to the fire when it comes to rumours of him leaving the club. Fifth, Hugo Lloris. I ummed and ahed for a bit with regards to Hugo Lloris' placement in this video, given that the Frenchman is a World Cup winner who has won 114 caps for the strongest national team on earth right now whilst also having dropped a few clangers in recent times at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Lloris is now in his eighth season at Tottenham, and he has undoubtedly proved to be an excellent signing for just 15 million euros. Appointed as Spurs' club captain in 2015, following the departure of Eunice Kabul, Lloris is obviously a very talented goalkeeper, but I don't believe he is dependable enough to be described as truly world-class. As such, the 33-year-old takes fifth place for me, although I'm sure many of you would be inclined to disagree. Fourth, Cesar Azpilicueta. Talking of brilliant signings made by Premier League clubs from League 1 clubs, Cesar Azpilicueta joined Chelsea from Marseille for just £7 million in 2012, meaning that he has to go down as one of the finest bargains of the Abramovich era at Stamford Bridge. Azpilicueta has since played 374 games for Chelsea, winning their Players' Player of the Year award in 2013-14 and replacing Gary Cahill as the Blues club captain ahead of this season. Asper Equator isn't the quickest or most physically dominant, but he reads the game well, he rarely makes mistakes, and he can cover at left back, right back, and centre back with equal aptitude. Third, Jordan Henderson. If this video were ranked on performance or importance to a team over the last two seasons, Jordan Henderson would come out on top. The Englishman was superb for Liverpool last season as the club won the Champions League and amassed 97 points in the Premier League, and he has been just as impressive this season, with the club all but having confirmed a first league title during the Premier League era. Henderson has had to graft at Liverpool since his arrival from Sunderland as a 20-year-old, even resisting a move to Fulham at one time, and he's now central to Jurgen Klopp's side. Henderson has captained Liverpool since Steven Gerrard left the club in 2015, and he may well go on to captain the club to more success than the man who preceded him. Second, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. I was really torn between who to put top between the top two in this video, although I was in no doubt as to who made the top three, just their order. In the end, it is Arsenal captain Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang who has to settle for the runners-up position. Arsenal haven't had a brilliant time of things since Aubameyang arrived at the club in January 2018, but that is hardly the fault of the Gabonese international who couldn't have done much more than he has at the Emirates. Aubameyang has scored 61 goals in 97 games for the Gunners, including 49 in 75 in the Premier League. He was the division's joint top scorer last season, and he trails only Jamie Vardy in the scoring charts this season. Quick, intelligent in his movement, and lethal in terms of first-time finishes, Aubameyang's Arsenal future may be uncertain, but he has captained the club since Granit Xhaka was stripped of the armband earlier this season. First, David Silva. One could argue that Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang is a more effective footballer than David Silva these days, although even that would be up for debate. But in terms of talent, Silva is still untouchable as far as Premier League captains are concerned. This is of course David Silva's final season at Manchester City, but that is wholeheartedly a decision of his own making. And following his performances this season, Pep Guardiola is likely wishing he had the Spaniard for at least another season. Silva is, simply put, one of the finest footballers of the Premier League era. Tireless, creative, and so assured on the ball, Silva has put in some of the finest individual performances I have ever seen in the Premier League. He captains Man City following Vincent Kompany's departure last summer, and just as the Belgian did, Silva will leave a big hole that Pep Guardiola will have to plug. That is it for today's video. Thank you all for watching. Give us a like if you enjoyed the video, and as always, do make sure that you are subscribed to HITC7s.